Falcon and the Winter Soldier is currently in the principal photography stage of filming. They've gone from a seaside pier to a football field at Duluth High near Atlanta, Georgia. And some interesting set photos have emerged that we should talk about. But before we do, I want to thank you for watching JLS Comics, whether it's your first time here or you're back for more. Don't forget to share this and subscribe so you don't miss all of our videos we make each week, just like this one. And also, this is your last stop with a spoiler warning before we get into potential spoilers for the series. So you've been fairly warned. Ready? All right, let's get into this video. So Falcon and the Winter Soldier is the first Marvel show out of the Disney Plus gate. In fact, it comes out in the fall of 2020. And as such, it's important to set the stage and expectation for the rest that will ultimately roll out. One way to do this is to introduce a deep cast of characters to support Bucky and Falcon. But to figure out who that might be, you don't really have to look much farther than the characters' own comic book backstories to see who all might be included. Now, keep in mind that Marvel likes to take the framework of a story and adapt it, so their backstory might be similar in broad brushstrokes only, but the idea is still there. Civil War is a perfect example of this. So we know that Sebastian Stan is back as Bucky, of course, and Anthony Mackie's back as Sam Wilson, aka Falcon. We also have Daniel Bruhl as Baron Zemo reprising his role, and Emily Van Camp as Sharon Carter. Adapera Oduye has been cast in an unannounced role, but it's very likely that she's playing Layla Taylor, romantic love interest to Sam Wilson. Also, and this is our focus, Wyatt Russell will be playing U.S. agent. Who is that? Well, John Walker was a U.S. Army soldier. He served at Fort Bragg, and after discharge, he came across a guy in the power broker who was making super soldiers. So he was beholden to him. It was kind of a corporate superhero. And he ran into this gang called the Bold Urban Commandos. They were called the Buckies, and he fought them. And one of the Buckies is a guy named Lamar Hoskins. Remember that name. Walker came into the public eye when he fought a guy named Warhead that wanted to blow up Washington, D.C. with a nuclear device on the Washington Monument. The same monument that Spidey leapt over a helicopter from and Spider-Man Homecoming. It'd be interesting if this makes it into the series, but instead of a nuclear bomb, this could very well be where the Mad Bomb story from Captain America 193 comes into play. That great return of King Kirby, if they reference that. Anyway, Cap had quit, and the Superhero Registration Act Commission had to choose a new Captain America, and it came down to three choices. Sam Wilson, he declines. Nick Fury, he's not chosen for certain reasons, but maybe Sam Jackson will make a cameo. And John Walker. And of course, Walker's chosen, he takes on his own Bucky, which was one of those Buckies I mentioned before, Lamar Hoskins. And Hoskins takes on the name Battlestar. And Scooper Charles Murphy says that yes, Battlestar will be on the show. Also, Walker, right around this time, is trained by Taskmaster. Could that somehow connect to Black Widow? And then there's this whole thing with a guy named Flag Smasher in another part where he gets a Viranium Shield from Black Panther. That may or may not be part of it, but here's something I think will play into the story. Walker had a brother named Mike, Mike Walker, or so we thought. Mike's actually working to recruit Walker for the Scourge program and goes by the name Bloodstain. It will be this really classic brother versus brother fight. And so having to fight this guy that he thought was his brother and then realizing that those memories were actually fake and implanted makes him go crazy. And then that's exactly when Falcon and Winter Soldier are taxed with bringing him in. I can see it easily happening. Anyhow, Later on, U.S. agent has to stop the Thunderbolts from stealing Odin's spear, but a villain named Nuke stabs Walker with the spear and he ends up losing his left arm and his leg, but then he's tasked with putting together a new Thunderbolts team with a team leader, none other than Songbird. And in the midst of his psychological descent when Falcon and Winter Soldier are trying to bring him in, is it also Baron Zemo trying to bring him in and recruit him for his new team? In this photo, there's a stage, and it looks like it may be used in the show as the platform from which the United States government will announce John Walker is the new government-sanctioned Captain America because we know that Sam Wilson declined. The logo on the stage is matches U.S. agents' logo perfectly, so it's pretty much confirmed. However, if you look closely here, you'll see someone with pink hair. This pink person seems to have on a rather large overcoat. Coats and draperies are the manner by which the crew hides cast costumes lest they reveal it to the press prematurely. Happens all the time. Also, it seems that this pink-haired mystery lady is wired to that black crane looming in the background. There's three wires, one, two, three. See them right there. And we know that Baron Zemo, complete with his mask, is the main villain, right? So who could, based on what we know and what we just talked about from Walker's backstory, this be? two options. I mentioned her before, Rachel Layton as Diamondback. Diamondback was trained by both Crossbones and Taskmaster's Crime College. I've been saying that Taskmaster, who will be in the Black Widow movie by the way, could have a greater connection to this all, as it was also part of Zemo's Thunderbolts at one point, and he did train U.S. Agent. She's also experimented on with the blood of Captain America, making her a super soldier in her own right. Could she somehow be from the same project as U.S. Agent? 
But speaking of the Thunderbolts and girls with pink hair, Songbird is another possibility, like I said before, and as postulated by Charles Murphy on Twitter. Melissa Gold is a character from Marvel 2 and 1 who, like many, have gone through multiple names and costume changes. She started as Screaming Mimi, and even, yes, had a pink mohawk, just like this picture. And yes, she was also part of the Thunderbolts at one point. And let me remind you that another scooper who will remain unnamed says that Thunderbolts have, after years of speculation, by this channel too, mind you, entered early development. And if that's true, laying the groundwork early by planting seeds and easter eggs and characters who will become somebody else in the future is vital to the mighty Marvel movie method. Are one of these characters working around US Agent in some insidious way, masquerading as a hero when they're all villains? Did Zemo plant characters like Songbird, Bloodstain, Battlestar to trouble the new Captain America? Could he be working towards that Thunderbolts team? He could be. And it's also possible that this is all just part of the crew, and I'm not sure why she'd have those wires there, but maybe she's just somebody working there. Regardless, take this all with a grain of salt, and whether it turns out to be accurate or not, it's still a hell of a lot of fun to talk about. And speaking of talking about it, now it's your turn. I want to know who you think this mysterious pink-eared mohawk person is, and who else you think might show up on the show. Go ahead and tell me that in the comment section below. That's a wrap on this one, my friends. As always, I do look forward to your comments, questions, corrections, suggestions, and all of that down below. Don't forget to subscribe so you can be a part of all of our videos, new and old. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.